Today we're talking about menopause, and today I'm super lucky to have my good friends, Dr. Andrea Wolf and Nisha McKenzie with me. They are two very experienced practitioners in the field of women's sexual wellness and health. How are you guys today? Great, great. Thank, Thank you for having us. us. Yeah. So menopause has been such a taboo topic, and people often are embarrassed to talk about their symptoms, and it's such a scary time for women. How do we know we're entering menopause? So the classic definition clinically is that there are no periods for a year. Um, what complicates that is that there are a lot of symptoms that happen before periods stop. Or a female may have had a hysterectomy, for instance, or an endometrial ablation, so they don't actually have periods anyway. So a lot of women um, will start having symptoms or experiencing symptoms such as hot flashes during the day, night sweats at night, um, kind of weight gain that's inadvertent or it's resistant to typical measures that they've always used before in the past. Um, they may find skin changes, um, dryness of their skin or kind of creepiness of their skin, hair loss. Some will experience mental fog mm -hmm. or um, just, you know, not just a typical, I can't remember where I put my keys, but I can't remember what the next word in my sentence was. Um, yes. Some will experience decreased libido or pain mm -hmm. during intercourse. Um, and then just metabolic changes, like you said, with weight changes that, um, for example, they just may respond to foods differently and they may feel more bloated and not process their foods the same. And so, so the body changes and we just didn't, we didn't used to live this long. Right? Sure. We're, we're in the 1900s, we, our, our life expectancy was 40. So now we're living so much longer, we have to learn how to live happier. So what age, what is the typical age of a patient you see and what would you recommend? I usually recommend people come see me as soon as they start to notice that something is interfering with their daily activities. I mean, even mid-30s is not mm -hmm. too early for this type of change to start start creeping in there. Yeah, and I think that it's really interesting in that we're seeing an overall change where women are on average are having children later. And so often this is kind of chalked up to, oh, these are postpartum changes, you just had a baby, that kind of thing. When in reality, it could be yes, they had a baby, but they're also starting to see some perimenopausal changes. What can women expect on an initial visit? Our general first visit is just listening to your story and your history and finding out what what is affecting you in the, in the greatest way, and then trying to address that with any type of medication, sometimes lifestyle change, often, always, I should say, <laughs> lifestyle change. Andrea, what kind of treatment options are available? Back in the day, our mothers just had to grin and bear it, but there are so many options available for serious menopause symptoms. Yeah. What are some of the typical treatments you offer? Nowadays, we all are well aware of hormone replacement therapies that can take place in a lot of different forms. There are also non-hormonal treatments. So we start looking at, like Nisha said, lifestyle changes. Um, there are very simple lifestyle changes that can definitely help with things like hot flashes or night sweats. Thank you for joining us today. You can see Nisha McKenzie at the Center for Women's Sexual Health and Dr. Andrea Wolf at the Grand Pearl Spa. And you can find me as well at the Grand Pearl Spa. My name's Dr. Jeannie I. Thanks for joining us today.